Hello and welcome to the CMIP Debate Theatre here at NAB Show 2022. Next up, we have a session on digital rights man management simplified by Olga Kornienko, co-founder of Easy DRM. Over to you, Olga. Thank you, Will. Hi, everybody. My name is, as Will just mentioned, Olga Kornienko, and I'm the co-founder and COO of Easy DRM. Okay, figuring out technology, there we go. Um, so quickly about the company. Easy DRM is a specialist in digital rights management. We are the company that coined the term digital rights management as a service, and we offer a straightforward one-stop solution for protecting and monetizing your content. We launched in January of 2003 in the cur current format. We are from New York. Our one focus for our company is DRM. That's the only thing we do, and we do it pretty well. Uh, we have a proven track record of security, scalability, and uh, reliability. We have a large customer base that's worldwide, which also means we have a large infrastructure of geo-dispersed and globally uh, uh, redundant servers. And the main word and keyword we use for our company is simplification. We try to simplify integration. We try to simplify our business approach to the technology. Um, so what is this all about digital rights management? Let's face it, security can, uh, video delivery service can never live without security. In the brick and mortar world, we lock the doors to our houses, we lock data centers, we lock the offices. A typical goods business locks the front doors and puts security around their physical assets because once those assets are stolen, they can't sell them. So why should this be any different when it comes to digital assets? Without any form of security, we cannot guarantee the revenue of um, our business, and we cannot provide uh, and secure own, uh, rights for owners and content providers. We need security. I was actually quite surprised when I sat in on a panel that was conducted by universities and homeschooling organizations that talked about a large infrastructure that they have built around their um, redundant servers and all the infrastructure they have for streaming classes, for streaming sporting events, and mobile trucks to stream large sporting events for universities. And when I asked the question about security, I got a very quiet answer of, well, we don't have any why. Um, and they couldn't explain to me why they would invest millions of dollars in physical infrastructure but completely not protect the digital assets. They saw it as a hindrance. But it should not be a hindrance. It should be a tool that one uses to uh, secure the revenue because threats are everywhere. Easy DRM over the summer of 2001 conducted a survey with a con in conjunction with it Help Me Stream Research Foundation and Streaming Media. And we took an approach of figuring out and trying to find out what our customers and partners see from a perspective of the amount of piracy that's in the industry. And what we found was very shocking. On average, our customers told us that about 20% of revenue, or sorry, not our customers, people within the industry told us that about 20% of revenue is lost to piracy. Now pause and think about that number. It is different for every single business, but what is 20% of your revenue? And what would you be willing to do to cut that number in half? A third. And the other interesting thing we came across is that that number is not just because of organized piracy. Though it is a large percentage, it is not just organized piracy. A lot of other aspects come into play when it comes to piracy. Technical issues, where a person is not able to log into a service because something is not working, or a stream is not loading. Subscriber churn, where users just unsubscribe from service because they find it 
somewhere else, be it for free, pirated, or just they no longer want it, and then decide they would like to find it somewhere else. Um, various rights, laws, and issues. And I guess my favorite, my, my personal pet peeve is geographical issues. When we start to travel from our own hometown and home um, region to a different country and we're no longer able to see the content we should be able to see, the question become, why not? And as we all know, VPNing into your own country and then seeing the content you should be able to see is a form of piracy. But there are also things that are way more important than revenue. In today's world of virtual meetings, corporate town halls, and proprietary information being shared over Zoom and all sorts of web conferences, it is very important to protect all of those assets and all of that information from being leaked. Imagine if your latest strategy meeting was leaked to a competitor and now everybody knows what the plan is for the next six months to a year. Or imagine having a video of a conference or a CEO presentation get leaked, cropped, and changed. So now um, a sentence can be taken completely out of context. We all sign NDAs when we speak with our partners and clients and for job interview, for job, um, we accept the job. Why should meetings be any different or why should content get leaked just because it's virtual? So EasyDRM took a very straightforward approach to try to simplify the process. As we all look at the show, we can see that most companies on the exhibit uh, floor have a very specific niche. They have their own specialty. You have player companies, you have encoder companies, you have content streaming companies, or just content companies. But for all of them, and most of them, their core business is not security. Why would you ever go to a hardware store, buy nuts, bolts, you know, screws and whatnot, and build your own lock for the front door of your own house. You wouldn't. You would go to the same hardware store, buy the lock, and either have it get installed or install it yourself. Your digital assets should not be any different and your corporate security strategy should not be any different. You should find a DRM provider that is easy to deploy, that has a large partnership ecosystem that integrates with their infrastructure and that the solution should be transparent. Um, and at EasyDRM, we approach that uh, by posting all of our partners, posting all of our documentation on the website. So if you're like me and would like to do some research before contacting the, co contacting the company and then having a sales guy ask you every three days, are you ready to buy? Are you ready to buy? Because you're not sure, you can actually come to our website and look to see what we offer without being harassed. And until you're comfortable and you know which questions you want to ask, you can do all the research yourself. And with that said, small is a beautiful thing. We built our solution as microservices. And we're leveraging the, pl uh, the power of the cloud in order to grow our infrastructure in a minimal with a minimalistic footprint. As long as the infrastructure that we have to support our clients can grow to meet their requirements when they have a requirement for a spike, and then can wind down after the live event is over, all you really need to do is use the cloud infrastructure to meet this need. And this cloud, I mean, that's why we all use the cloud, right? Because it allows us to leverage this wonderful technology with a very low human overhead. And just to get slightly technical, but not really, easy DRM workflow. Um, we genuinely believe that a native DRM technology should be used on the device that it's meant to be used on. And to that effect, we have, uh, we're we have four DRM technology that we offer. Uh, we offer Microsoft PlayReady, Apple FairPlay, Google Widevine, and Huawei's WisePlay. We do offer ClearKey, however, we all know it's not a DRM technology, but it is also available. And yet again, to simplify the process, we've broken down the s our services to two APIs. 
It's a keys API that talks to the encoder and the packager, and it works with your content management system to DRM protect the content, and it's a rights API that works with the entitlement system on the playback, and it allows um, our clients to dictate and have full and complete control over the DRM licenses that are being issued to their clients. Um, we genuinely believe that DRM is a tool that one would use to protect their revenue, and we genuinely believe that it should never, ever, ever dictate a client's business model or a business need. It is there to help make everybody's life a little bit easier and a lot more secure. Thank you very much.